we shall not, we shall not be moved. Come on, y'all. We shall not, we shall not be moved as like a tree planted by the. Okay, let me start it again. Y'all ready? One, two, three, four. We shall not, we shall not be moved. We shall not, we shall not be moved just like a tree planted by the water. We shall not be moved. Come on, y'all. We We shall not, we shall not be moved on like a tree planted by the water. We shall not be moved. On your feet, the whole room, come on. We shall not, we shall not be moved. We shall not, we shall not be moved out like a tree planted by the waters we shall not be moved that's the morning of Zori from North Carolina the Bay Area now New York City How's everybody doing? How was the 2017 Reform Conference? You learn a lesson? Anybody make a new friend? That's what I'm talking about. So we have you for this hour. And before I get started, there was a, a session on Ibogaine just before this. And Paul Cornwell, picked up the wrong bag and somebody picked up his bag. It has his medication in it. Mr. Cornwell, would you stand up, please? It's this handsome fellow right here. So can you find him? If, you, if in your bag you have medication, a prescription that's made out to Paul Cornwell, that's not you, that's him. And it has also some black sunglasses. Please be sure to connect with him. It's a red bag, it's a reform bag. It was an easy switch. Well, depending on what the medication is. I ain't saying nothing. <laughs> and so it is our tradition, as you know, for those of you who've been here before at reform conferences, to run around like crazy people the last day or so of the conference and get recommendations from all of you of important points to re-highlight at this closing plenary. And of course, I asked people to do it early, and everyone told me who they wanted at about 3.30 today. Thank you for that. <laughs> but we have some extraordinarily compelling speakers and people we want you to hear from. Several of them are going to come up, as I call them. And let me begin with my brother and my friend from Intercambios, Puerto Rico, Rafael Torreya. <laughs> My name is Rafito Ruella, um, and I'm executive director of Intercambios Puerto Rico. So, so I was asked by Asha and other people just to talk about today about my highlights and about Puerto Rico. So I'm going, how the hell am I going to talk about this? I'm going to be honest, it's really difficult for me to do this at this point, right? So obviously, the first thing that pops into my mind is to talk about Reflections about the wonderful Michelle Alexander and her invitation to think big. We need to think big. So what does that mean for me right now? Coming from Puerto Rico after the devastating Category 5 hurricane, what does that mean? Thinking big for me right now is thinking that harm reduction to, should work towards the end of colonialism. That's in the front of my right there. We don't do this, what are we doing? That 
We should work for the end of imperialism, and why not, let's say it, the end of capitalism, which is what we're dealing with. This Category 5 hurricane is making things kind of clear for me right now, the disparities. I also wanted to think highlights. Well, it's also thinking about my friend Dudu. Is Dudu around from Brazil? And the wonderful work that they do and the, their insistence and their analysis, their very critical analysis that, of course, race is the base for the social control that the war on drugs is, right? So I would extend that even further and talk about race, class, and gender. Where are those analyses? We need to keep doing that. Then I reflect and think about how Trump insults us as Puerto Ricans after this Category 5 hurricane hits, right? This is where I'm living right now. This is where my pain is. And it's been 27 days, and we're still like 10% with power grid. 90% of Puerto Rico doesn't have power. Many of us don't have running water. We don't have power. Public health issues are bubbling up, and we need help. Other highlights? Personal conversations with the lovely Miss Burden. And she reminds me of the amazing strength of the African-American sisters and brothers and their solidarity with Puerto Rico. We don't talk about this enough. We don't talk about the solidarity between what they call us minorities, right? It's important to do this. Another reflection, some highlights for me that I'm going to leave this DPA 2017 conference with. It was in a panel um, that it was titled Defending the, the Most Harmed. And I had the wonderful, the distinguished privilege, privilege of being there with my friend Shiloh and with the wonderful Devil Smalls, of course. And they reminded me of the love and the hope of the reform and harm reduction movement and the need to begin to think of a harm reduction approach to our natural and social disasters. What is our approach? And then I started reflecting a little bit, thinking, would part of this approach would be using the concept of full spectrum harm reduction as developed by our amazing Mexican brothers and sisters from Reverdecer Colectivo. This could very be it. Where is our theory pushing further and adapting to this very much social disaster that has been created? For me, it's very difficult to be up here as my home, island colony. Of Puerto Rico is being picked apart and sold by disaster capitalists. So I'm going to ask for two things. One is your love, which I must admit, I, I'm really glad I came because I'm receiving your love and I needed to get out of the island and feel the love and reflect of what's happening down there. And I'm really happy that I was here with my family. I can reflect back and say, I was here with my family and I got love. So thank you for helping me. Thank you for helping Puerto Rico and helping me personally. I'm going to also ask you to ask for your financial support, whoever can do that. I'm going to ask you to please go to the DPA Facebook, either the conference or the general one, and look for a link there. And if you can, in any way, shape, or form, if you can give your money, please click the link. It will open up, and you can give $5, $10. If you can give more, please give more. We really need it. And when I say we really need it, at this point, we're talking about batteries, water, flashlights, alcohol pads, hand sanitizer, very basic things. As basic as salaries for our staff, because there is no health department giving funds right now, right? It's, it'll go to help our over 1,000 people who inject drugs. Sex workers and homeless individuals receive very basic services in the eastern side of the island. Just a little story to close with. When we got, we've been operating for a week and that, this is our second week operating. We only took a, a week and a half break because we didn't have fuel to get around. And when we got there, heroin markets were not disrupted. Cocaine markets were not disrupted. People looked at and said, I'm so glad you're here. Look at my arms. I'm glad you're here because nobody used to give this like nobody else would give this type of support. 
We were there before and we're there after. So if you can support us, we'd be really helpful. Thank you.